Bordeaux, part two. Now, for Bordeaux part two, we're going to cover the right bank of Bordeaux. As we said in part one, there's a left, there's a right, there's a river, cuts them in half, then in the three. So what we're gonna do is focus on this right bank of Bordeaux. And the right bank of Bordeaux is actually quite different from the left. Now let's talk about why. The left bank of Bordeaux has more like, um, uh, more like the, almost like the sandy soils, okay? More sandy, silty soils. You know, it, it was a lot of the left bank of Bordeaux was reclaimed at one point. It was underwater. You know, and thanks to the Dutch, you know, they did the whole, they're pretty good, what, dam builders, right? So they basically rescued the left bank of Bordeaux and kind of their semi to thank for all those great left bank Bordeaux wines we have today. But that being said, the right bank of Bordeaux had no such problem. They were there already. And this right bank of Bordeaux has more clay in the soil for the most part. And when you have more clay, there's one grape that's really, well, there's more, but at least in Bordeaux, there's one grape that's really, really happy in clay. And that grape is Merlot. So on the right bank of Bordeaux, we're talking about a Merlot dominated area. Now the right bank of uh, Bordeaux is broken into um, a few different zones, which um, pardon the iPad, you know, I, I, I know my stuff. Okay, but still, bear with me. Now, these zones, first of all, you have Saint Emilion, okay, and you have Palmerol. Saint Emilion and Palmerol are the two major zones in the right bank of Bordeaux. Palmerol is near the town of Libourne, and that and Palmerol itself focuses really on Merlot. A lot of clay there, it's not very hilly, but that being said, the greatest Merlot in the world is produced in Palmerol. San Emilion guys might be a little but hey, come on, the best Merlot in the world is produced in Palmerol. Fabulous area for growing Merlot grapes. And some of the world's greatest wines, Chateau Petrus, Chateau Le Fleur, Chateau Le Pen, Trot de Noir, some of these Terrific, terrific wines are all produced in the Palmerol region. Now, if you go a little easier to the right, you bump into San Emilion. And San Emilion's kind of like a different creature. They're, they're quite different from each other. Although San Emilion dominates, uh, although Merlot dominates in San Emilion, uh, it's quite hilly and there's a lot more textures and terroirs and nooks and crannies in San Emilion. So there you have the opportunity to grow a lot more of their second favorite grape variety, which is Cabernet Franc not Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. And recently, due to global warming or perhaps better grape growing techniques, what have you, Cabernet Franc is really starting to take over in San Emilion. While, while the area, while the zone is still Merlot dominated, Cabernet Franc is coming up fast. And we can maybe anticipate another 15, 20 years that Cabernet Franc is gonna be maybe the majority grown, particularly in those wonderful hilly areas along the coat that produce some of the most profound wines from Saint Emilion, like Chateau Ozon and Chateau Pavie and, uh, and, and just superstar wines like this. You know, more and more, those, uh, those areas are leaning towards Cabernet Franc. Now, we covered, we covered the Saint Emilion, we covered Palmerol. Here's where it gets a little kooky. There's a lot of other regions in the right bank of Bordeaux. And these are all names that you will eventually see on a bottle of wine, usually a very good value priced bottle of wine. These subregions or satellite appellations on the right bank of Bordeaux produce some of the Bordeaux's greatest values. Again, dominated by Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Uh, let's see, you wanna know why I need this thing? Here we go. They are Cote de Castillon, Puisseguin, Saint Emilion, Cote de Franc, Saint Georges, Montagne Saint Emilion, Lussac Saint Emilion, Le Land de Pomerol, Canon Fronsac, Grave de Verre, Cote du Bourg, Cote de Blaye, and of course, Canon Fronsac. No problem, right? You got that. Okay, you got all that, right? Okay, this is a tutorial. I just tutored you. You can rewind it and play it back again and do all that stuff. Interesting story with, uh, with Fronsac, though. I'm going to digress just a moment to Fronsac, one of these satellite appellations. You know, early on, uh, prior to the phylloxera scourge, this root louse that devastated the vineyards of Bordeaux in the late 1800s, uh, Fronsac was actually uh, considered the grooviest place uh, on the right bank of Bordeaux to grow great wines. So when you go to the right bank of Bordeaux today, you'll notice in Saint Emilion and in Palmerol, there aren't a lot of castles or chateaus, you know, there aren't a lot of these big grand buildings. A lot of little places, you know, small little limestone-y places, etc. But you go to Fronsac, and that's where all the drama's at. 
All the greatest, coolest buildings of the right bank of Bordeaux, most of them were located in the front stack. Attached to these chateaux, which had a, had a, have a great reputation now, but had a, you know, even a stellar reputation prior to the phylloxera scourge taking over the vineyards and the Bordelais is using the opportunity to replant the area and kind of move some of the vineyards a little closer to their towns, right? You know, Pomerol kind of got hot after, you know, the phylloxera came in and the folks in Liborn were like, why not go grapes a little closer to town? We have less to walk. It's good. <laughs> and they did it. And uh, that's where we got some of those great Pomerol wines today. Now, stylistically, the right bank of Bordeaux, when you're dealing with Merlot, you're dealing with a different creature than Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc for that matter. The Merlot tends to have a creamier texture, more supple, more uh, baking chocolate, more cocoa, more black cherry to the left bank's kind of currenty, you know, kind of current infused flavors. So uh, for want of a better word, these right bank wines in general are a bit sexier. They're softer, they're rounder, they're more supple, they're more generous early on. Um, and for the most part can age almost as long as many of the top left bank wines, and in some cases as long or longer, especially the ones that have that Cabernet Franc infusion, because the Cabernet Franc tends to provide a bit more structure and intensity to, to some of those uh, bolder wines from the San Emilion area. Uh, what do you have them with? Well, you know, what do they have them with? Uh, they love lamb. They love foie gras. They love uh, mussels. They love oysters. They love uh, the local white uh, uh, river fish. Uh, the, the, don't laugh at me. Bordeaux can go great with white fish. I've done it. I'm going to do it again. They do it in Bordeaux all the time. It's, trust me, it works. Okay, none of this... Uh, Bordeaux red wine with white fish, no, no, no. Trust me, it works. Uh, so once again, the versatility of Bordeaux kind of shows itself because I would encourage you just to open a bottle of Bordeaux and have it with kind of anything. You know, even the folks in Bordeaux now, their cuisine is less staid than it was before, and they tend to be going more towards a fusion thing. There's, we see a lot more Asian influences or Moroccan influences, that kind of stuff finding its way into Bordeaux. And, and wouldn't you know it, like... For example, this glass of Bordeaux has wonderful kind of spice cakey characters and baking spices and stuff. Pairs beautifully with these, as long as they're not too spicy, uh, Asian-inspired cuisines. Now, if you're going to get in the right bank Bordeaux business, it's kind of like the left bank. You got bottles that are a thousand bucks, eighteen hundred bucks, but people tend to gravitate towards those wines just to give the perception of Bordeaux as an expensive place. But in fact, with all these satellite appellations, there is a slew of tremendous wine available in the marketplace south of $25, which uh, for premium wine that can age 10 years and taste great and is versatile, you have to say that the right bank of Bordeaux can provide some of the greatest values in the wine world today. So um, grab a glass of Bordeaux. Remember, for the right bank, you're grabbing Merlot or Cabernet Franc. If it's on the left bank, you're grabbing probably Cabernet Sauvignon. And regardless of what grape variety it is, enjoy it.